Cristiano from the coming. Lovely to meet you all. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's great to meet you. Thanks, guys. So it's the peak of festival season for you. This yesterday, Victoria's Day, Reading tomorrow. First of all, how was playing yesterday's show, and what do you bring to a festival set in comparison with a normal concert show? This double question. <laughs> yesterday was amazing. Yeah, the uh, one of our favorite shows. Well, favorite shows, like yeah, like possibly ever. The crowd were amazing, and they were so loud, and they were really up for it. They hadn't ruined themselves because you know, you, you, <laughs> like sometimes you turn up on a Sunday, and everyone's just wiped out. It's just walking wounded, isn't it? Um, but um, yeah, everyone was really up for it, and it was really fun. Uh, festival sets compared to our own sets. I guess we treat it like you know when you're you're not playing to your proper crowd, so you, you can't expect everyone to know all the songs. As you might do at like our own on our own tours, so I think we always try and do quite like a generous set and play songs we think people will know and love. But we also, you know, we're really proud of our new album, so we want to mix it in with new songs, and we've created a whole show with visuals for the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, trying to trying to do a bit of everything, you know, bring people along on this kind of big weird audio visual adventure with us, and hopefully also give them a big exciting set of songs they want to hear. That's great. So some bands thrive during festival. Um, do you think Bastille belongs to those kind of bands? I think so. I think I think um, you know we are massive festival fans. We always used to go to festivals growing up, and now we get to play them. And so you know, I, I think I, we approach our sets from the perspective of what I would want as a fan um, and what we don't want as a fan. And, and so I don't know. I, I, I guess we're one of those bands where some people know a couple of our songs, and then you know way less people know all of our songs. But so it's the kind of band I think in a festival you'd be like, oh let's go check them out and see what they're like. So it's our job to kind of try and win everybody over. Um, Sometimes it's kind of um, a journey the dot thing. So like people might have heard to say a song on the radio but then don't know it's us and then they see it they're like, oh, oh, like, oh it's those guys. Yeah. yeah. So yeah uh, but I guess within that we still want to be as great creative as possible and um, you know, all of our albums, the last couple of albums have been concept albums and so that kind of allows us to go into these weird little worlds and then the live show is like our way of bringing that to life. Um, so I'm sure there's probably quite a lot of people who are turning up being like, when are they going to play Pompeii and why is he on a chaise lounge? Which is completely fair enough, but yeah. Um, is there a particular band or show that influence your way of performing on stage? It's a really good question. I, I don't know, if, uh, well, Kate Bush was the first person when she was touring back in, I think, the 80s, she was the first person to really bring in theatrics and and, and the sort of theatre world and visuals and, and, and set design into, into mainstream music. And I think that, that that has echoed through tours and production, you know, for years since. And we always try and, you know, turn the stage that we're on into, like, a kind of visual representation of the album that we're doing. So I guess that would be a big influence. Um, so you can touch it, I always imagine because I, I get really nervous on stage, so I always imagine in my head that I'm Eminem. <laughs> which I'm sure you can hear in the music. Yeah, I can. Particularly songs like Oblivion. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I like to run around stage pretending that I'm Eminem, at its angriest. That's great. Um, I know it's like asking who is your favorite child, but uh, is there a particular Bastille concert that stays to your heart, uh, a song that is particularly fun to play to perform for you, for each one of you? I'm going to go first because uh, Shut Off The Lights is a song of our new album and I love playing it so much, it's such a great vibe and um, and we teach the chorus to the, to, to the crowd and they sing it along with us and yeah, I, but I, I think just all of us are really enjoying playing that song at the minute and um, it comes right at the end of the set, it's not the last song obviously, it's best deal. Um, um, but yeah, it, it, it just goes down really well and um, I really love it. Child, <laughs> and I hate the rest. <laughs> um, a favourite gig? I don't know. I think we've had so we've been so lucky. We've had you know some amazing gigs in South America. The crowds are just unbelievable. We've had um, the glass flowers. Glass and breeze were amazing. Hope get to the pyramid stage, but also like Rock Verta. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean we're 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 so spoiled. We've had so many amazing experiences live and and. Um, but in terms of the song, I don't know, I quite like, we used to play a song called um, Two Evils, The Lesser of Two Evils, off our second album, and when we were playing arenas, Will and I would, for that song, we would run to the highest point in whatever venue we were in. So sometimes that was like three tiers of seating up, or like 
up a fire escape and out in like a little balcony. Yeah. And we and, and Will would bring his guitar and I'd sing and we'd just go out there and sit and play at the scariest, highest point, play this song. And I don't know, something about that I always really loved because often our shows are quite sort of loud and, and there's a lot going on. And so that just that that moment of doing something really stripped back was always really nice. But also, I also couple it in my mind with being absolutely exhausted. Awesome. Well, some of them were okay because they were in like with the audience top tiers, but some of them were literally just perched on the edge of like ledges. And also, it was a period, not anymore, but I used to drink a bit on stage. So I was quite often a little bit tipsy by the end of the show because it was at the encore. So I was often like teetering on the edge of literally death, a little bit pissed, <laughs> trying to play guitar. So it's sort of harrowing for me. It's a metaphor for that. Yeah, yeah, for the song. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on your own latest album, Give Me The Future, and its newly released extension. Dreams of the past. Can you tell us a bit more about this latter one? Because it's like a, a unique album, but two chapters. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first half of the album came out in March, and this is the second half. So now the complete version is out, and it's basically everything we've done over the last couple of years. It's the you know, the concept of, of escapism, and I'm wanting to escape sometimes into the future and sometimes into nostalgia in the past. It's all about that, and so the new the full version allows us to kind of explore a lot more of those themes. It's also got one of our mixtapes, which are called Other People's Heartache at the end of the second disc, just to make things nice and confusing for people. So it's like, it's two full albums with loads of music in it. It's like, I think the first half is much more like science fiction down the line, like retro futuristic upbeat songs. And, and I think the second half allows us to explore a bit more sonically and, and like lyrically as well. But we're super proud of it. And we're really excited that the whole thing is out. And we really hope people like it. And how did the collaboration with Britsa Matthews form? So we're just massive fans of, of Riz and, and we, there was a space in the album where we wanted to sort of pull things back into like an intimate moment. Um, and we're big fans of his, you know, as an actor and as a campaigner, but also as, as a rapper as well. So we sent him a bunch of songs from the album and I think he really appreciated that we were trying to make pop music that was asking kind of weird and complicated questions. Um, and he just responded to it. He listened to the songs and he just sent back this poem. I mean, said, you know, we wanted it to be quite a kind of quiet, intimate, um, a quiet, intimate spoken word piece. And yeah, that's just, that's just what he sent us. Like, and we were completely blown away. So yeah. Last question, how did the, um, sorry, um, anything else that you can tell us about future projects? Next, what's next for the um, We've got a lot more touring for the end of this year. We're doing a whole bunch of festivals. We're going to South America and South Korea. We've got a European tour. Um, Project-wise, I don't know, like, Dan kind of never stops writing music, ever. Like, like as in, so there's always stuff going on. Pro Project-wise, what are you allowed to say like, about things that you're doing? Dan's doing some stuff, but I don't know if we can talk about it. You can talk about it. Yeah. Well, but we just put out an album, so that feels like... Is that crazy. not enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've given you everything. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.